Hi, it's Anne. Thank you for stopping by. We're continuing with our series of uh, short little junk journal January videos. And the subject of the day is ombre. And I'm excited to try this because this is, um, it's not a technique. It's not a medium that I am experienced with. So we're going to be learning uh, right here together. I've done a little bit of practicing before I kicked on the camera, uh, varying degrees of success. I would say less, <laughs> less success than actual learning experiences, um, but that's okay. That's why we're here to do this. Um, I want to do some watercoloring because I, I got these watercolors for Christmas and uh, I'm excited about them. I've been playing with them a little bit. I've never done watercolor painting other than, you know, using a uh, using the ones um, uh, that, that kids uh, kids have playing with my grandson. And um, I decided to get a, a basic set of grown-up um, watercolor. This is the Arteza brand. Don't know much about it, but I recognize the name. And um, I thought we would try with a little bit of ombre um, experimentation. When I think of ombre, my understanding is it begins with the application of uh, of an intense amount of color and then it gets gradually lighter uh, and we're just going to kind of see how um how we can make that happen with uh with these watercolors so i've got a couple of them wet already because i've been playing a little bit and i have my rinse water here and uh, i have some dictionary pages now i know that watercolor is the success of watercolor is heavily dependent on the quality of the paper that you use. I'm not using good quality watercolor paper. I'm a junk journaler and I want to use a book page. So we're just going to see um, how, how it works out. But what, what I have in mind is having, um, putting a, um, a, a, just a stripe, a series of stripes down and having um, uh, each one be gradually lighter. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but let's, let's see. I'm going to, and spritzing so I have fresh water and not water that could be contaminated out of my rinse, uh, contaminated at least color-wise out of my rinse water. I'm moistening the watercolor pan with my fresh spray water. So this is just, I don't have many brushes either, so this is just a little blunt end one. And we're going to see how this works. Just pressing that down. And I can see it's getting a little, a little lighter. I actually would like to keep this stripe fairly concentrated because I want to put the lighter colored ones moving progressively to the right because what I have in mind is being able to have a little piece that um, that I can stamp something on and then use it as a focal point um, on a tag. I haven't thought much beyond that. Now it's loaded up. I'm gonna, or it was loaded up here. I've used some of it and I'm gonna go just a little bit lighter and hope it doesn't run out of pigment too, too quickly. And I know being watercolor, it's not going to be really even. I'm trying to press a little more lightly. This is, looks like it's coming out just a little more faded, not quite as much as I had thought. Well, well that one really came out faded. Maybe I should bring you in. I hope I don't a little more faint and a little more faint. I imagine like with anything, this is something that practice would bring more of the desired results. But I really kind of only wanted to go to this portion of the page. You know, that's, it's not great. 
it's not great. Um, oh, I probably shouldn't be dabbing in that extra area. I've, I've put more pigment in there. Anyway, that's, that's how that is. Um, let me switch to a different, a different brush. I have, I've been using this a little bit too. This is a fan brush and because it's wet right now, it's, it's separated itself into uh, little chunky pieces. It makes me think of old school Liza Minnelli fake eyelashes. Um, so, uh, but we could do a lot worse than that, couldn't we? Let me set this aside because my idea for this video is just to let things dry. Then I'll, then I'll use them and, you know, show, come back and show you how I've incorporated them into something. Maybe here's a little bit of a smaller. dictionary page. Um, I think I'm going to use this fan brush just so again, I've been playing with it a little bit and um, I think that this might be an interesting ombre effect too. This isn't going to be solid lines. This is going to be kind of swishy ones. I'm trying to keep my pressure kind of even here and let that pigment flow naturally out of the brush. It's going to get fainter and fainter. It doesn't, still doesn't get really faint, but I think you can see the difference uh, between the that rather intense teal at the top of the page. Um, let's see, as long as we have this rust color wet in the pan already, let me pick up some of that. And we'll see how that goes. The challenge with this is because it takes all of these inches to get down to the, the, the pale part of the ombre, you're going to have to have a piece that, um, that can accommodate that full spectrum. This is not working as good. Okay, there's the rust and I missed a bunch there. Probably should have read these pages a little more closely before I put them on camera. I got the teal, I got the rust. What should come next? Um, yeah, maybe this kind of mustardy color. Boy, if there's artists watching, I apologize. I'm probably making you cringe by the slapdash way that I'm going about using these watercolors. I'd love to take a watercolor class. I'll look online and see what I can find so I can at least know a little bit more about what I'm doing with this wonderful medium. And I'm just going back and forth. because this is pale to begin with, it really gets down to be pale. <sighs> I'm not certain how I'm loving that, but you know, I think maybe it fits the brief of it being, um, uh, being an example of ombre. And um, I think what I'm going to do is let these dry and uh, we're just going to, we're just going to see what we can do with it. Okay. It is now only a few minutes later, uh, but here, this piece, it's now a tag and I think it is a very serviceable tag that I can journal on the back of and um, it shows you know the the heavy colors here the little bit lighter colors here I would have liked them maybe to be a little bit lighter but um, yeah, for a first attempt I think I'm I think I'm okay with that I made this and I thought okay I need a focal point here oh wait I have this 
So this is how, uh, you know, once it was trimmed and mounted and stamped upon, that's how that other little ombre piece looked. So I thought well, I could make that as a focal point. But of course, it needs to be dressed up a little bit more. I, I cut some gauze. What did I do with that? I thought I, I felt like I wanted some sort of a textile uh, behind it. I don't know why. I just thought I would put this little piece of gauze. You could use cheesecloth, but I tend to use gauze like you have in your medicine cabinet because it's cheaper and easier to store but i didn't love that it would be okay i guess but i had this piece of stained lace that i've had sitting around for quite a while and i thought what would that what would that look like i kind of liked the swirliness that sort of echoed the more rustic swirliness of the ombre so I think I'm going to go with that. And then, um, you know, of course I have all of my, all of my labels and you've seen me make so many of those labels. Um, but let's go ahead and just finish this up and we'll, I think this, our own life label is going to be the way we're going to go. Uh, I need to use Fabri-Tac here and that one's almost empty. We'll use this because anytime we use a textile, Fabri-Tac is generally the best choice for an adhesive. I don't really know what's in that. I need to ask my niece, Amy. Maybe I'll ask her. She's a chemist and, a, and an expert on adhesives. In fact, maybe I'll text her tonight and say, Amy, what's the deal? with Fabrifix, Fabri Fabri-Tac or Beacon 3-in-1 glue. They are one in the same. What's the deal with this? Why is it so awesome for textiles? I bet she'll know. I will report back. There we go. And since we're going on top of this textile, I'm going to use more of the Fabrifix. This was a fun little project. I never would have honestly thought to experiment with these watercolors in this way um, if it hadn't been for the Junk Journal January prompt. And that, you know, really Meg at Meg's, Meg Journals. I'll put the links below, although you are probably already familiar with it. It's a little offset. You're either familiar with Junk Journal January or you're participating in it at a much higher level than I have been. Uh, it just is just a really nice, a really refreshing challenge to get you to think about things in your own special way. A little bit of art glitter glue to get this little label there. And that will surely be an appropriate an appropriate prompt for me to think about something to write about. <coughs> Excuse me, about my own life. And what shall I put in the top there? I don't know. I could put some more lace there. I think I'm just going to let that sit. I'm going to let it sit and figure out what kind of a topper it wants to have. Anyway, there's our fun for Junk Journal January. Day 25, ombre. We'll see you the next one. Bye-bye.